Hello, I'm Lori Craig. I'm here to show you how to use your Bark Art Esprit airbrush kit. Um, it comes with 10 colors, uh, airbrush, the cleaner, the sealant, and a bunch of stencils to make it very easy and fun to use. The first step to getting your airbrush working is actually putting it together. You have your compressor, your hose, your power source, your pen, and your holder. So you can actually set your holder up. You just click it into the side. You can put your pen in. On the back, there's a little hole right here on the side. It's got the uh, airflow. And you just push your hose in. Make sure you get it down there as far as you can get. So that way you don't have any air leaking. Just get a nice good tug. It's a good size hose, so you can get pretty far with it and get around a big dog. And you put the other end on the actual pen. Just push it up as far as you can get it. And then you just set up your power source. And that goes on the backing, right underneath. You just plug that in, hook it into your power source and you are ready to start airbrushing. On your airbrush pen, there's a couple pieces that you need to know about so you can make sure you clean it properly and keep it in great working condition. This back piece unscrews. In here you'll find your needle. This unscrews. And this is your needle. You do not want to push this all the way out, but this will also help with airflow but when you start with your airbrush, you need to push it all the way in and get it nice and tight. Screw that back on. Put your back piece on to protect your needle. This is your lever. This is going to give you the amount of air ink. So you'll see greater flow or lesser flow with this. This is your gravity fed cup. So you're going to put your ink in here and this is the airbrush tip. So these are the components that you're going to need to know with your airbrush. This airbrush is actually a continuous flow airbrush. Whenever you use it, you're going to have this blue light that turns on and it'll let you know that it's on. You are going to have airflow going through this, but do not worry if the needle is pushed in, you're not going to have ink come out. What makes the ink come out is this lever. So if you barely push back, you're going to get a little ink. If you push way back, you're going to get a whole lot of ink. So, but you do have to make sure that you turn this off whenever you're done because it can burn out the motor. I'm going to show you how to fill your gravity fed airbrush with the Bark Art inks and how you need to practice before you start using it. You can use a piece of felt and that way you can just throw it away at the end of the day. What you need to do is shake up your ink and you're only going to have to apply a few drops of color. So we're going to do three. And you're going to turn on the airbrush. And just compress that. Start making lines. What you do, let me hold this up for you. If you take that lever and you press back, just a little bit, a little bit of ink is going to flow. The more you press back, the larger the amount of ink is going to flow. So practice with small lines at first. And you can make them larger. After you've ran color, you do need to clean out your airbrush. What I do is with this being a water soluble ink, I actually add a little bit of just plain water at first. And I'll take a paper towel and I just want to run it until the color turns clear. So you know you just have water going through there. I'm going to run one more time. I 
can see it's starting to run clear now. Get that extra ink out. And then I'm just gonna run just a couple drops of cleaner through it, just to really finish it off. And now you're ready for your next color. There are 10 colors in the Bark Art Airbrush inks. They are interchangeable with each other, so you can make any color that you want. There's the cleaner, the color spray seal that you want to do after you've applied your color, and the 26 stencils, all kinds of holidays and just crazy fun, good time stencils. Uh, the, on black dogs, you're going to want to use your white airbrush first. And when you apply your white first, you can add any color on top of that. So it's not just limited to light colored dogs. These are the Bark Art stencils. They come five to a package. And the really neat thing about these is that there's a splash guard on them. And they are sticky back, so you can actually have hands-free coloring. So all you have to do is tap it on. I'm going to add a little bit of ink. And since she's a darker colored dog, I like to apply a bit of a white base first. Her skin tone, you could actually apply just straight color, but this will make it stand out just a little better. So I'm going to add just two drops of white. Turn on my airbrush. I'm just going to apply this white first. And as you're changing colors, this will dry. And we're going to add purple on top of it. So what I'm going to do is just get out this excess ink. There was only a couple drops in there. But since I'm going from lighter to darker color, I don't have to thoroughly clean out the machine because I'm going to clean it after I do this darker color. Again, you can only do that going from lighter to darker. I'm going to allow that to dry while I clean out my airbrush, and then it'll be set. And now I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, stencil off. And these are reusable up to a certain amount of time, so what you want to do is take the backing, put it back on, hold it up, and you can use it on another day. Also, I'm going to use the color sealant just to help hold it on a little longer. And now for those clients who want to add just a little bit more than the simple stencil, we're going to do one stencil and then we're going to airbrush a little bit around that to help really bring it out. I'm going to do this one in pink. Again, shake up your inks. Couple drops. On these, just a couple drops will do it. You just kind of want to get rid of that excess ink that's in it. And this one, I'm probably just going to add one little drop. Get that metal piece. And then get rid of that excess ink. Add a little green to this. And if you really want to make it pop, you can outline another color on top of this and it will really bring it out. The closer you get 
the more defined you're going to get, the further away the wider the spray is going to be. want to do it in a little bit of a darker color. Another common way to add color in this lawn is to do the tips of the ears, tips of the tail, and tips of the feet. For tips of the feet, all you have to do is pull the hair down with your fingers and you're going to turn on your airbrush first. <laughs> you just pull this hair down, and hold it with your hand and you're just going to apply the base of that foot with some color. You just kind of want to go around as even in a line as you can. And that helps give them that cute little beveled look. A little showstopper. Simple and cute. Another common area that people like to add color onto their dogs is like the tip of the ears. What I, what I like to do with that because the air compressor will admit so much air that it will kind of knock the hair around a little bit. I like to put a brush underneath it and just kind of pull the hair through. And I like to turn the brush on. And with that brush, you can just add color to the tips of the ears. You can see it better on the darker coat. And that's just a fun way to add a little more color to the dog. Now we're going to apply a stencil on a little bit longer of a coat. Anything longer than a 7F, you want to go ahead and apply the hairspray first. So that way, whenever you use the airbrush, the pen is not separating the hair and you can get a nice crisp line. So what I'm going to do is take my show style hairspray. Now that our hairspray is set, this is a little stiffer. You can get a little better detail with it now. The hair won't be blowing around. You do a couple little, with the longer coat you don't want to like smash it down in there because then you're going to move the hair around. So just a light application. And I'm going to outline it, just go a little deeper around the outside of this to help it stand out a little better. And I'm going to take this one off and move it to another angle. And again, just lightly tap it in. Just a couple drops, so I'm just going to put a couple more in there. Finish this off. And we're actually going to go ahead and just get a little crazy and do four so you see how quickly you can apply these. horseshoe in the middle. Tickle. I'm 
I'm just going to add a couple drops of blue. And we're going to go ahead and do a little horseshoe in the middle. the sealant spray as soon as I take this off just to help hold all the color together. What we're going to do is we're going to go over a smooth coat. You do not need hairspray to apply a stencil to this type of coat. Well, since it's black I'm going to lay the white base coat first so our other colors will show up. But I'm going to do a two-tone so we're going to do the little heart with crown. And I'm going to go ahead and add. So now that we have that white base coat, I'm going to turn around and add a little bit of yellow to this. Our yellow is coming through. And I do our crown in yellow. We're going to empty out that yellow. of spray to help the sealant spray to help hold everything on. And we're going to peel it off and it just shows you how well you can do even on a black coated and short coated dog. Probably the most important thing you need to know about your airbrush is proper cleaning. You're going to have to do it often. Every time you go from a lighter color to darker color you don't have to thoroughly clean the airbrush out if you're going to still be using it in that short period of time. However, if you're done coloring, you have to clean this thing out. So what I do is I add a little bit of water into the gravity feed on top. And I want to spray, spray, spray until it runs clear for me. See, it'll still spit some out here and there. And then I'm going to add just a drop of the cleaner on top of that. Now sometimes if the inks are sitting in there a little longer, they'll form on, on top. And you'll need to take a Q-tip to get in there and clean that out. And I want to show you a couple things on this. Okay. So we're going to have to go like way in because there's a little needle we have to look at. So what I have to do is go ahead and take the back end off. And I'm going to loosen this nut and I'm going to pull the needle back. And what I'm going to do is pull the needle back till I can no longer see it inside of the gravity fed cup. And I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit so that way I don't pull it all the way out. If you do pull this all the way out, you're going to have to realign it and push it through this. So try your best to be careful to not do that. I'm going to take a Q-tip. And I'm just gonna, now that that needle's out of the way, I'm just gonna try to get some of that excess color out of there. And while I have my needle pushed back and sealed, I'm also gonna take this tip piece off. And I'm gonna add just a drop of color, or cleaner. I'm gonna add a drop of cleaner to the tip of this and get off this excess color. If your airbrush stops blowing color or starts splattering, it's generally because this is clogged up with color. And it will dry on there, so you just need to get that cleaned off. And I set that down. And this little piece can also get filled up with color. So I'm just going to kind of put a little bit of cleaner in there and use a Q-tip again, just to really get this thoroughly cleaned. You can screw that back on. Put cleaner through it one more time. Push your needle back through all the way to the end. 
turn it on, and it'll still spray a little bit of color, but that's what was still left in there. And when it sprays nice and clear, you have your machine completely cleaned out. And it's ready to go again for your next one.